Hey there, baseball fans. I'm Ben, and today we have Score Through the Ages. This is a 88 score, 89 score, 1990 score, 1991 score, 1992 score baseball cards. I've um, got two packs of each one. We're going to see how Score evolved in its first five years in existence. Um, as you can tell just by the packaging, one of these things doesn't look like the other. So 92 is when they started to change their packaging, and really 92 is when it seems to kind of start to evolve a little bit. I mean, 91, they start to have multiple series, uh, not just be one series, but um, in any case, they're always kind of known for their good photo quality and, um, you know, decent card stock and their colorful designs. So I have to say I'm a pretty big score fan. I think they did a good job with their baseball cards, at least in the early 90s, the 80s and 90s, I'd say. So let's see what we get here as we go through and look at these. As usual, I'm looking for some of my favorites. Sean Dunn. Oh, there's a Reggie Jackson. They have a Reggie Jackson subset in this or series in this um, in this set because it is his last year, and so they did a kind of a tribute series with a bunch of Reggie Jackson cards in there. So it would be nice to find those. And um, they did have a lot of information on these because the internet wasn't around. So like, look at that tiny, tiny, tiny type. We can zoom in for you guys, but. If you hold this in real life, you really have a hard time reading the novel they wrote on the back of these things. I don't whatever happened to Andy Van Slyke. We'll find out. Hey, look at that. Tom Glavin. This is kind of the most sought after card in this set, in this series. I've got a few of them myself, but... So there you go, there's that Tom Glove and there's a Don Mattingly. I can say from my friend Polly's Packs on YouTube, go check them out. So that was 1988 score. The second year, they moved into 1989. Package remained very similar. The design changed quite a bit though. Still color-coded with the bottom though, but um, you can see they have a more photo-focused design than they did in 88. It's a very large in card. They increased the headshot. Um, had a nice layout in the back there. Man, Tom, what's going on with your hands there, buddy? There you go. Pat's got a better swing. Tom, I don't know what you're doing. Maybe check swing. Wonder if these guys would ever, ever saw these cards and were like, oh man, I can't believe they chose that picture for me. So here's the World Series. That's the Battle of the Bay. Wasn't it? Oh, no, wait. Dodgers versus A's. Maybe, oh, it's 89 that was A's and Giants, wasn't it? In any case. So we got a Jose Canseco and Oral Hershiser. Moving right along for our second pack in 1989. Score. Oh, look at that. First card in the pack. Ryan Sandberg looking sharp, playing at Wrigley with the Ivy in the background. There's Rhino. So I'll put that aside for my personal collection. Right there. And there's Dave Winfield. Yankees, great. And Padres and Angels and so many more. Dave Winfield, of course, a member of the 3,000 Hit Club. Not too many players actually make that milestone. It takes a lot of solid work and longevity to pull that one off. I think that's one of the things that I think truly makes an astounding ball player, someone who was able to do it for years and years and years. There are a lot of people who had a great run of four or five seasons even, but to do it for 20-plus years or so, or you know, 10 or 15 even, Remarkable. Uh oh, we might have something very interesting in this pack. Could it be? It is. It's the Bo Jackson shoulder pads card. Everybody loves this card. Big bow on the back. You saw it here, came right fresh out of this pack. And look at the centering on this is great. Uh, maybe a little bit on the right, right to the left here, but uh, we'll put that aside. I'm sure people will want to see that one. 
It's actually the second one I've pulled from this box, I think. The other one was not on camera. I actually opened it up in a package when I was randomly opening for fun. And I was like, oh, man, I wish people could have seen that. So there you guys, you guys saw it here. There's the Bo Jackson card. That, I mean, it's just such an iconic picture. I mean, super exciting to, when they put that in there, it's just a, a stroke of genius for whoever's idea that was at score. Oh, look, Nolan Ryan, 89 highlight. That's I think that's his 5,000 strikeout. Yep. So that's a fun one to add to the collection, my personal collection. Um, what I was saying was whoever at score decided to take that picture of Bo and put that on a baseball card. Smooth move. Oh, there's a Juan Gonzalez rookie card. That's a good one. Yeah, smart move putting that on the card. Remember the poster hanging in my in my uh, cousin's bedroom when I was growing up. The only posters I had were uh, I had a lot, of, I had a lot, like every inch of my wall covered with pictures I pulled out of Sports Illustrated of my favorite players. This is 1991. You can see a very, still a very colorful design. In 1991, they started introducing a lot more of those subsets with the all stars, with the caricatures and stuff. So. Good, uh, good set, good year. They also had the Mickey Mantle inserts you could find. There's Barry Bonds. Nice picture of Kurt Stilla. I'm always impressed by those jumping over as you're turning a double play of pictures. I mean, that was Craig Biggio. Very nice. And on to 1992 score. Again, this is when they changed the design of the package. And I was looking the other day when I was looking through these, you know, I was like, oh, they, they stopped doing the color coding. But in fact, they do. It's just on the sides here, this blue changes different colors throughout the series. So look at that. There's the Ryan Sandberg. I don't know that I have this one. I must have it. I must have this one somewhere in my collection. I think I might have just dinged the corner I dropped it. It's no good, but just for me anyway. So that'll be nice to add into my book. So you can see the colors change there, purple and blue and red. And so yes, yeah, still color coded through 1992 at least. Jeff Reed laying on the ground, hurt. That is quite the shot of him. Huh. Dave Justice. Again, I'm always so interested in why they choose these shots for uh, these cards. As you also notice in that 92 set, they don't have the lenticular, whatever happening in this state in baseball history thing. So let's take a look at old Andy Van Slyke. Solid player, center fielder for the Pirates primarily. Cardinals before that. I knew him as a part of Cardinal, as a uh, Pirates player more. But the question is, what happened to Andy? There he is. Started in 83 for the Cardinals, finished in 95 for the Phillies. With 274 with 164 home runs. 792 RBIs, Cardinals, Pirates, Orioles, and Phillies. Orioles, I didn't realize that for a year, too. Three-time All-Star, five-times Gold Glove winner, two-time Silver Slugger Award. First-round draft pick in 79. Just reading about this uh, during the Gulf War, 
Major League Baseball decree all players would wear both the Canadian and U.S. flags on their batting helmets. And Vance like scraped the maple leaf off his helmet. Huh. So he was the first base coach for the Tigers. And then Seattle Manager's manager. Oh no, he was the first base coach for the for the Mariners. And assistant hitting coach. Well, this is what he made every year. 35 grand in 1983. Can you imagine a ball player making that much now? And then look at look at that. In just in three years, went from thirty five thousand to three hundred and thirty five thousand. That's a three hundred thousand dollar difference in those few years. That is just crazy. And then Pittsburgh had him four point three million in ninety two, four point nine million in ninety three. Just crazy how this goes. Um, Vance Lake received no votes. It was eliminated from Hall of Fame voting. So there's that. Uh, he's an author focusing on books centered on baseball. He authored Tiger Confidential, The Untold Story Inside the 2008 Season. Interesting. And then The Curse, Cubs Win, Cubs Win, or Do They, with a book in the subgenre sports fiction about the Chicago Cubs finally breaking their 100-year curse and playing in the World Series. Interesting. Four Sons three of whom played college or professional sports, so I guess it runs in the family. Football player in there. and So there you go. Andy Van Slyke. Interesting and colorful history there. Some solid baseball playing. Certainly some money being made. So hats off to you, Andy. Nice work in uh, being a solid major leaguer for years and sticking with the game and raising an athletic family and then putting some pen to paper and becoming an author. The rest of you, we'll see you next time.